Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Chris Mazzarella, and you're watching No Reserve Classic. And before we get started, guys, if you haven't done it already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, because you never know, your dream collectible could be in the next video. And here she is, one of 20, numbers matching, super original, GT 500 KR. And what does that mean? King of the row, baby, Shelby. It was in everybody's lips in the time of 1968. And it starts right underneath the hood with that 428 cubic inch Cobra Jet motor with over 400 horsepower. That baby's made it up to a C6 three-speed automatic transmission and that four nine-inch rear end. On the exterior, an original Wimbledon white fastback with all the correct Shelby attributes all the way through the vehicle, including those 15-inch 10-spoke Shelby wheels. As we hop inside, you're gonna notice a bunch of rare attributes to this vehicle. It has a tilt pop steering wheel and that super rare fold down rear seat. It has shoulder harnesses, air conditioning, and even an AM FM radio. As we move down to the underbody of this car, three key things, competition suspension, power disc brakes, and power steering. So overall, well-preserved piece of history that you can drive. So guys, don't go anywhere because not only are we gonna take this vehicle for a drive, but we're gonna bring this vehicle to a Shelby expert. And after that, we're gonna bring it back to the barn and show you guys what accessories this car comes with. Now, I know you guys can't be with me here today on this beautiful turntable, but if you visit us at No Reserve Classics, you'll be able to take this piece of history for a virtual 360 degree tour. That's right, with a simple swipe of a finger, you'll be able to view the beautiful exterior of this car. And after you're done with that, hop over to the inside for another 360 degree virtual tour. And last but not least, if you guys have any questions on how to get this car into your garage, feel free to give me a call, Chris, at 1-800-562-7815, and I'll be sure to guide you through the full process. Some really cool features about this GT500 KR is the history, and it surely is an interesting one. Notated by the Shelby American Automobile Club, as well as the Shelby Registry. Now only 1,571 of these Shelbys were ever made between the May, months of May and July of 1968. Out of those, only 20 were outfitted the way this vehicle is. Now, although this vehicle was born in New Jersey, over here, wonderful New Jersey, out of 20 of those vehicles, two of these vehicles actually went to Michigan. Now, there are some interesting stories that go with this vehicle, and I have some of that history right here in my hand. Now, this vehicle was outfitted to be going to Borgman Ford out in Granville, Michigan. Now, right close to them, about 50 miles, less than one hour away, is a company called A.O. Smith. A.O. Smith actually was a subcontractor by Ford to complete these Shelbys. But this vehicle was already made, like I said, in Metuchen, in New Jersey. Now, inside of this magazine, we have some interesting facts. One interesting fact is a gentleman named Jim Frank. Jim Frank was an engineer for A.O. Smith. And in this magazine, we have a article about the A.O. Smith Corporation and how they were closing their doors. Now, in 1969, A.O. Smith closed the doors. But before they closed the doors, they had a bunch of vehicles that were not for sale, engineering vehicles that were given away to some schools, some mechanic shops, because they were not able to be registered. Now, inside of this magazine, it does notate that either one or two of these vehicles actually slipped through the cracks and were sold by A.O. Smith. Now, shown here is some title information on 11-7-1969 that A.O. Smith actually sold a vehicle. Now, A.O. Smith is actually a subcontractor that was hired by Ford to complete these Shelbys, whether it be a GT500 or a GT500 convertible. They were all done over here in Iona, Michigan by the A.O. Smith Corporation. Now, back in those days, they didn't have any tests areas or anything like that. So what they did was they actually self drove these vehicles and some of the vehicles were actually driven by the engineers doing all their testing. Now this vehicle was sold in the year 1969, a year after it was actually made. Now as shown here, November 29th, 1968 is the actual window sticker for this vehicle with a dollar amount of about $5,297.51. 
Now, during the period of November 29th to November 6th, of 1969 the subsequent dealer history unfortunately is unknown but november 7th 1969 we actually have the paperwork here with the title number from michigan stating that a.o smith corporation actually sold this vehicle on november 7th 1969 with an approximate mileage of 25,000 miles for the slim amount of 1300 bucks and then it was sold to the engineer's son-in-law, Keith Blackrick, who actually owned a dealership in Michigan. Now, he owned the vehicle for approximately nine months before some insurance issues, and that vehicle was then sold again. So in total, about four known owners for this GT500 KR. So until now, the year 2022, this vehicle actually resides here in New Jersey back where it was born over here at no reserve classics waiting for its new owners to open its doors once again and also included with the vehicle are some factory original parts as well as some aftermarket brand new parts some seals and some other accessories now going back to what i was just saying about the history of this vehicle you might say hey chris why are all these components out of the vehicle if you're telling me the car's original the carts are brand new well Back in the day, there was a gentleman named Cecil that worked for the A.O. Smith Corporation, and his job specifically was to test drive these vehicles. Yes, they actually paid somebody to drive these cars all day long. Anywhere between 10 and 50,000 miles were put on these cars individually. So if you look at the rear end here, it's brand new. I mean, everything is working and very, very smooth, which is really, really cool. So what they would do, the engineers, they would take the carburetors out, take the distributors out, change the rear end ratios, get that air fuel ratio a little bit better, improve the horsepower, improve the way the car handled and felt, get a lower end uh, torque on there or a higher end top speed. All these components were switched out at some points in a lot of these vehicles if you looked at the history of the vehicle. So we have the rear full pumpkin with the original gears in there, the original carburetor, the original distributor rotor cap, as well as a brand new AC compressor over here, and even the original coil pack, which is really cool. So no matter if you wanted to leave the car as is, or put all the original components back in the car, as soon as it arrives to your door, you'll have everything with you. All right, guys, I got the keys. So let's take a ride back in time and see what this KR really sounds like. All right, nice and easy startup. All right, I hear those ponies. All right, this is the king of the road. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready. So let's get strapped inside and let's go for a ride. So here we are, finally got to take this Wimbledon White 68 GT500 KR for a ride. And I will tell you, I am not the least at all disappointed with this car. As soon as we pulled it out, we got a few looks already. That Wimbledon white on here with those blue stripes just screams Shelby. I mean, beautiful exterior, great interior. So we got this car on the ride and look at this. My hands are off the steering wheel, just cruising. Very comfortable ride. Um, it started up really easily. It's been about 22, 23 degrees the last couple days here on the East Coast. Very cold. And this baby started right up. Very nice feature about this car. So, put it into gear. No bumping, no weird quirky noises putting it into gear. I got it up to speed here. We're about 60 miles an hour, 2300 RPM, just cruising looking and feeling great. The steering wheel that's on here is the tilt-away steering wheel. So as soon as I got in the car, I clicked it right into place and was able to go on my way. The horn is functioning correctly and all the gauges are working. We have our gas meter here, our clock, our RPMs, our speedometer, and of course our temperature gauge, which is still at the cold level, because like I said, it is a cold one outside. Now, factory from this car, we have the AM radio. We know we don't really use it anymore. 
but it is a really cool feature that you really don't see anymore. On the left hand side, an original air conditioning car still functioning. Right now, I actually have the heat on. Let's press that down and turn that fan up to high. And that baby's blowing nice and warm air, keeping us warm in the colder days. And as soon as it gets hot out, bam, we put that air conditioner on and we got full blast of ice cold air. So on the interior, full deluxe interior, really good cushion on this seat over here, as well as the center console with the, of course you have the iconic Shelby Cobra right in there, letting everybody know what it is our functioning center console give us a little bit of storage because remember guys back in the day they didn't have cup holders in these cars and it, it just you didn't need them so you have enough space in here for some cds some cigarettes your cell phones just a lot of space in the center now what also is in the center is the seat belts here now if you notice i only have a lap belt on they do have shoulder belts over here but i will tell you with the brakes on this car whoa you definitely want, don't want those babies pulling your shoulders back. They didn't have a lot of safety restrictions like they do nowadays with airbags and all that cool computerized stuff. So we're gonna take a little turn here. Man, those wheels were just spinning a little bit, so cool. But I still stayed in my seat with this high cushion, the high back seat over here. Keeps you really well plush, and very comfortable. I mean, the way you hold the steering wheel, you got one arm up on the window here, one on the center console, just cruising and relaxing. The gas pedal has great response. We are going 70 right now at 2,500 RPMs, 3,000 RPMs, 75. And this baby's handling great. We got a little shimmy out of the steering wheel, but the car is almost 60 years old. I mean, listen, I got a little shimmy in my step, but I'm not even 40 yet. <laughs> So the GT500 KR, KR, king of the road, baby. And I will tell you, I have not been disappointed at all with this ride. I mean, 60, 70 miles an hour for a car that's this age, all original. It doesn't get any better than this. So let's take some turns and put the suspension to work and see what this baby's really all about, king of the road. Let's see. So we're going over some of these bumps and humps in the road. Let's hit a little pothole over here. Wow, handled it very well. I mean, we're gonna take this turn a little aggressively. Very nice. Not too much body roll on here, which is a great thing to do. Now, like I was saying, king of the road, right? These cars were made to be beaten on, right? They're made to go to the track, blow those babies up, put another motor in it, and let's go hit the rack the track next weekend. But what's really cool about this car is that it actually has the 428 four valve Cobra jet motor with the matching C6 automatic transmission that are both numbers matching, which is really rare because like I said, they blew these cars up through another motor and called it a day. Now putting this up next to another Shelby, it's gonna be pretty hard to tell what this baby really is. But as soon as you look at the side of the car, you'll know that GT500 KR emblems on the side. And as you start to look a little bit more further into it, you're gonna notice all the Shelby attributes on this car, the fiberglass front end. And as soon as this baby passes you by, you're gonna notice those iconic Shelby tail lights on this bad boy. I mean, it looks stunning from the outside. And as we scroll down the side of this car, you're gonna notice the 10 spoke factory wheels that are on this bad boy. And I'd like to say that these wheels look great. They look really nice, very factory, very original. But this vehicle is also gonna come with another set of wheels, a chrome set of welded Prager wheels with new tires on them. So if you wanted to actually use this car a little bit more aggressively, gives you a second option with the car, which is a really nice feature. No matter if you wanted to take this car, put it into your garage, your museum of cars, take it to a car show, a car meet, heck, even bring it to the track. This is one car you won't see every day. So if you're looking for a one of a kind, 
car that is super factory and drivable, right? This is the car for you. But don't take my word for it, guys. Let's head over to Mike, our Shelby expert, so he can tell you just how cool and well-preserved this Shelby GT500KR really is. Woohoo! All right, guys, so we're here. We got this GT500KR up on the lift, so let's bring our special guest, Mike, in, our Shelby expert over here. What's going on, Mike? Great All right, on. so let's let's get some facts about this bad boy man i see it's fully coated in primer and um so let's talk about little things that would rep you know let the people know at home what makes this car matching numbers what are some things to look out for and what do we see in here that is correct sure and what you just uh, initially mentioned was the primer so really uh what they call this was the uh, red oxide and a lot of the times too uh what you would see on just any mustang is you'd have this red oxide uh, primer underneath. A lot of times, you know, those colors weren't um, matching from car to car to car. A lot of times the rumor goes is that they, they dumped and mixed paint in at the end of the shifts and whatnot, so these, so the red oxide would vary. Really? Uh, in color itself. And a lot of times what you'd see too is uh, on these cars, this being obviously yeah, a white car, a lot of times you would see a lot of the white overspray, overspray. down each side of the car. So these were not obviously taped off and uh, made perfect with the paint jobs. But then again, uh, touching upon the colors and the uh, undercarriage and whatnot, on the lighter color cars, what you'll see what this, co what this car has too, is on the outside, what they would call this is a blackout. So where, oh, yeah, this, I noticed that, yeah. where this lip comes down here, if you're looking at it from the outside, they didn't want you to see the light color for this one, it would be white. So they put that uh, blackout stripe on the outside right there too. Nice. So uh, uh, continuing on what you mentioned about uh, numbers matching. So all these cars uh, had some type of markings uh, on the drivetrain, um, whether it was a tag, uh, whether it was a, uh, a casting. Sometimes uh, they were like a, like a paper tag, right? They just stuck right up there. Well, most of the- most a of wire the, tie. Uh, yeah, actually a lot of the times uh, on some transmissions, uh, I've seen on four trucks too. I actually have an example right there. Right there's a uh, one from the 70s, oh, um, wow. that one right there. That was actually tied to a transmission. Um, but a lot of these actually have metal tags on them, on the, on the Mustangs. So on this 68, if you want to start with the uh, rear right here, Let's take a so, look. so this rear right here is a nine inch, and obviously you can tell that it's a nine inch because of uh, these last bolts here, you can't, uh, you actually can't get a socket onto. These are just, uh, uh, you tighten them with a wrench right here. Um, just besides that too, on this uh, center section right here, this has the tag right here uh, that you can see Come right take there. A look. This is actually really cool, guys. So on this tag right here, Chris, if you look, it actually has a bunch of numbers uh, stamped on it, right? All right. Numbers and letters and whatnot. So this is actually giving you uh, the breakdown of what uh, rear end this is, the uh, rear end ratio, and its actual build date. Wow, so everything is right on there stamped. So what they do when they were going down the line, one guy would stamp it, hey, I did this. The other guy would stamp it, hey, I got these gears in here. And so this actually corresponds with this particular center section. So this being an automatic and uh, air conditioned car would have to get a particular uh, rear end in it. So this would have to coincide with the build sheet and they would have to build this car to that spec that matched up with the oh, automatic so they, transmission. They get the plate and then they get the parts according to the plate. Correct. Put everything in installed so, from there. Exactly. And then beyond this uh, tag on here, if you look up top, there's actually a couple um, casting numbers uh, on top of this. I'm not the tallest guy. <laughs> yeah, you can see from the back here, but uh, you can see some castings. So that's stamped right into the rear end. Correct, okay. and that actually right up top there, uh, you know, castings obviously varied, some are clearer than others, but that actually has a casting date uh, stamped in it too. So you'll know when this particular center section was actually built at the factory. And everything that you've seen so far, all the numbers, everything has been matching up correctly for this vehicle. Absolutely correct. Awesome, yep. sweet. And, and you base that off of obviously the actual build date versus the dates on here, which this one is, uh, you can see is 8C8. That means it was built in uh, March 8th, 1968. So it precedes the date when this vehicle is actually built. Wow, some components, so yeah, some components may have been built months before. Uh, some components, when you're talking about engine block and whatnot, they're, you know, in that four to six week range or so. So once again, um, so they got these cars built pretty quick. 
They did. Some parts were sitting on shelf for a while. If they're real generic parts, um, they sat quite a while. But if they're more um, specific and not as many built, then they want to sit as long. Now, is there a difference in parts and assembly on a GT versus like a regular Mustang would be? Maybe a special care that they did something different or? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say care so much, you know? <laughs> but obviously once they had that build sheet and that spec for it, it would obviously uh, get certain particular parts and pieces, you know, uh, especially how it was spec'd out. And you know, same thing, even when it comes down to dual exhaust, uh, you'll see that these were actually set up and they actually have the mounts on the back for that particular dual exhaust. So they would be coming through that rear pan right there nice. uh, to be set up. Now, as I see, everything looks in really, really great condition. All the boxes look really nice and tight. Uh, from your experience, what would you rate the underbody of this vehicle? It's a uh, structure-wise and you know authenticity-wise. Oh, it's a very, very solid car. Uh, really, uh, you know, no work uh, has been done except you know I was cleaned up and re recoated with red oxide uh, underneath here. But a lot of times, what you could see as a as kind of a dead giveaway from a original floor as far as how far back they took it down is you'll see a lot of these drip marks under here. Uh, all, the, all the original floor pans, you'll see these heavy drip marks. So they sprayed this stuff heavy and this red oxide would just hang down and drip. That's so cool. Now yeah. they did that as like a rust preventative, right? Correct, you call right. That? All right. But once again, you know, these were known uh, as rust stangs, you know, because they, they all rusted in the same common areas. Yeah, I seen them behind like the boxes, they'll just hold water in there. And... They would, you know, especially in those, in those rear trays here, the rear lower quarters, you know, especially being either a Northeast car or, you know, somewhere in the snow belts and stuff like that. You know, they rusted, you know, parts got replaced, but you know, it, it was to be expected. So, you know, moving up with this drivetrain, just uh, touching base next is this uh, automatic transmission here. So once again, uh, this automatic transit transmission uh, retains its uh, metal tag, as if you get in right here, you could actually see this metal tag oh. right here. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Right here on the side, it's very hard to see. Yep, so it's bolted right on the servo there, and that metal tag, uh, possesses the PGB AF, and that is the uh, correct automatic transmission for this KR. And it's bolted up to this servo, and the servo has a uh, R uh, uh, cast right into the side of it, and that is also correct. Oh yeah, right over here, I can feel it. For that car, correct, wow. yep. So once again, uh, transmission correct for the car, and then you move into the block itself right here, right? That's it, baby, so, that's where all the magic happens, right here. Absolutely. <laughs> where they shoehorn this in. So one thing right here is um, if you look up, if you can see these casting numbers, right? Yep, here we go. So right next to the oil filter here, this will denote the uh, date the block was actually built. So that's what, 8E23? Yep, so if you uh, do the math, uh, you take E, A, B, C, D, E, and then you just turn it into months, January, February, March, April, May. Okay. So that would be 1968, May 23rd. Wow. So once again, uh, I believe this was a June build car, so it's right around May, that. June, yeah, not even not even a month. Right, so it's right around that four week mark. So this is the actual uh, correct block, and everything that I saw on this car is that this engine was actually never even pulled out uh, wow. of this vehicle. Um, usually, you definitely see signs uh, when somebody pulled uh, pulled the engine out or did some work, but this one, everything that I've seen top top to bottom that it still has uh, stayed in place. No gnawing marks on any of the bolts or anything? Yeah, nothing, nothing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, other than that, through and through, you know, a lot of the standard uh, Mustang components on it. Um, you know, a couple replacement parts uh, with suspension, but that was, that's that's very common. You and know, see some this, new bushings and stuff like that. And yeah, the stuff wears out, and, you know, it is, it is what it is. The car was driven. Yeah. The car should be driven right. for a very long time. I mean, this car, even though this car looked really nice in a museum, I think, you know, if something like this you or I personally own, you know, would say, hey, jump in, let's go to the bar, let's go to the beach, let's go hang out, let's go grab some, let's go fishing even, you know, go <laughs> golfing, just have a good time and actually right. enjoy the car. Yeah, they're meant to be driven. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so um, before we jump over to the uh, top of the vehicle, um, I mean, from what you said, everything seems correct and it looks really healthy. Very, very, very well preserved. Once again, not a, not a restored car, um, which once again, you know, uh, a car is only original one time. So, you know, this is a very well preserved car, you know, and from what uh, we've gathered and seen on it, really basically just a, a repaint on the car, 
and a couple touch-ups here or there. And um, other than that, you know, uh, very well intact, uh, numbers matching drivetrain too. Sweet. Actually really excited about this car. Yeah. <laughs> Love this thing. All right, let's bring her down and take a look. All right, let's see where the power plant is. Horseshoot in there, huh? Yeah, I would Ooh. say it's wedged in there. <laughs> There's only like two inches of room over there, man. If no that. room. <laughs> if that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so a few things that I saw, the smog is still on there. We got air conditioning, power steering. I mean, it's fully loaded. Fully loaded, and it makes it a hard time of accessing the spark plugs, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, fully decked out. I mean, yeah, truly shoehorned right in there. So just like you said, this has, you know, people call it the Thermactor, the uh, emissions, whatever you want to call it, but all these uh, KRs got that. And, um, you know, once again, it added the uh, small pump uh, on the uh, belt line here. Uh, you had these... Uh, uh, the rails uh, on each side are uh, attached to the uh, to the heads right there, um, which are uh, down uh, each bank right there, and obviously coming up to the canister here, and um, that was your whole emission system, and it's it's awesome to see that it's still on here because once again, just like anybody else back in the day, these would just get yep, popped off, right off into the garbage, right? Ready to ship to California. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So they would just plug those holes up in the head, and off they would go. So it's great to see that it still has the uh, uh, original system still in here. Uh, original rad. Uh, what we just um, double checked. It has the uh, date stamp and the correct engineering number. Nice. Uh, original AC unit that's in here. That's crazy. Still got some of the tags still on there too. Absolutely. And you know, once again, um, you know, true Ram Air, right? Because it has the uh, whole uh, seal on the uh, air cleaner. Yeah, right up through here. Right up. And uh, you know, just like it's uh, the first half of the year, the regular uh, police interceptors, they just had the the two large openings. You know, right to your air cleaner. Where this one, they made the true Ram Air, where it seals up to the air cleaner. So, yeah. So you have this, uh, you know, half year change to the uh, to the KR making this Cobra Jet, and then um, what we discussed too, uh, the 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 first half of the year where they reinforce these shock towers. Yeah, right here, right. Yep. Going so, all the way around. So yeah, the first half they would just uh, weld in there, and now you can see down inside that these have the uh, real thick metal bands that wrap around the tower now for for reinforcements on these cars. Yeah, I've seen it too, where they um, and that was only in the the newer years, correct? So when they wrap this around, yeah. So I'm not, I don't know exactly which month they started it, but uh, later uh, later in the production part of that uh, uh, 68 is when they started adding this instead of just doing that sloppy weld. Yeah, right. <laughs> the Friday afternoon weld, right? Um, and you Friday can see night special. A little, a little, uh, little simple things like this, right? This uh, this hood seal right here still retains its uh, factory staples in there. Wow. Because they're always a, a pain to replace, and uh, you can usually tell when they're uh, still original. Okay. And um, uh, touching upon the numbers, right? Very, very important thing about this car. Uh, the VIN stamps and Shelby tags. So right there you have the original uh, Shelby tag, which includes its VIN number and the actual Shelby number. So 3565 is this KR. So underneath you would find is the uh, the actual VIN number for this car. That would be there. right underneath the fender, right? Actually directly underneath this tag. Okay. So that would be oh, that's right. It. Sometimes they would drill one out slide it out so you could check it so I, yeah that's right. pretty cool and but what you would notice on this car actually um and you'll see a variation of where they actually stamp these you know in out they move a little bit but on this side this is usually tucked back a little bit but if you see under some of the sealant this vent is actually exposed right here wow so you could actually see that uh this Super. is a factory apron on here and uh retains the factory uh vin number obviously which matches that tag which matches the uh, window tag and the door tag so once again, um, you know, showing you that obviously no replacement metal up front here. That's uh, awesome. Retaining all the VIN numbers. A lot of high horsepower back in the day, man. You would have think somebody would have put this into, <laughs> something. I don't want to say a wall or something, <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Yeah, right, right. So uh, so it's good, all, all straight pieces up front here. Um, yeah, so once again, a, a ton of stuff going on uh, in this big block engine bay, you know, having this uh, AC unit here. So they did things a little different with an AC car. They actually have this uh, vacuum operated uh, shutoff valve right here. So basically what that did was um, that basically restricted the, uh, 
the, the heat, right? The, the water, yeah. obviously, from going inside the box, so that way the the AC and the heat are not fighting over each Correct. other. Correct. Yeah. So once again, as soon as you turn now that it's all heat electronically on, done. Yeah, you know, but this was <laughs> high speed back in the day. High so, tech, baby. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so. Now we have some rare components. We were talking about this before. Yeah, we right? are. This uh, this starter delay right here. Um, so it looks like it has been repaired uh, at, at some point. Still retains its factory uh, uh, mounting bracket right here, but. Uh, but uh, super rare. Uh, a lot of times they're missing, but these things are very, very hard to come by, very hard to get, very A couple grand, right? Very valuable, yes. Wow. Um, they, they absolutely are. So uh, so it's great to see that this is uh, still in place and operating. I'm gonna go grab a screwdriver and take that off real quick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, so pretty much everything that we've been seeing underneath in the engine, and we're gonna grab over to the body in a second, is looking really good, man. Everything you've been saying is, whew, Awesome. Absolutely Good news. Spot on. Good yes. news. So let's close the hood, man. Anything else that you would say, wow, when you open up the hood that is exciting to you? Um, no, I mean, just seeing that Cobra Jet uh, sticker, you know, knowing that it's a, uh, that, that 428 under the hood here and uh, retaining a bunch of uh, factory components. It's great. Sweet. It's awesome. Nice. All right, guys, so here we are back at the barn. And if you guys haven't noticed already, one key thing that we changed right back when we got from Mike's place, the 10 spoke wheels. We put these babies back on the car, but this vehicle will be coming with those Kragers that you did see just a few seconds ago. Now, in the front of this car, because we ran out of time, let's go over it a little bit. We have the fog lights in the front and the headlights the four piece setup, that iconic Shelby mouth coming from you with the functional hood that we were talking about. So the air comes right in through here and cools that baby right down. But you will notice the OEM components on the car all the way throughout all the correct Shelby badges from the front all the way to the back. On the fenders here, the Cobra Jet 428 with that Cobra right there, but also the GT 500 KR. This isn't just any GT500. This is the KR, the king of the road. Now the body condition on this vehicle is very good for a fiberglass component setup. So all these components right here are fiberglass. As you can tell, there's a few taps. You can hear the difference between the metal and the fiberglass. But overall, the paint job on this vehicle is very, very nice for the age of it very good shine on it all the way throughout the chrome components are in very good condition not too much pitting or anything you still have a really good shine all the way throughout even the gappage on the front of the door and the hood you could tell right away by opening the door very simple one finger closes really nice one more time bam one finger closes nice got a good gappage top to bottom and side to side no big humps through there, really good condition. Now, like I said, this car is older, right? It's about 53 years old. So it does have some minor perfections here and there, but an overall really good looking car. So let's turn this car around and show you guys how this car looks when it's passing you by. So the first thing you're gonna notice when this car passes you by are those iconic dynamite tail lights. They are sequential, so as soon as you press the brake, Boop, boop, boop. The, the tile lights sequentially flash one, two, three on both sides, way ahead of its time. It's something that the Mustang just started doing a few years ago. But if you do notice, this is a different color. This is actually a silver color. On the Chevys, you'll notice a big block with that awesome satin black finish on the rear. Now, down below with that, you're going to have the true dual dual exhaust. So, two tips on each side of the mufflers here which they started doing with the GT500. Before that, you had the police interceptor motor, which only had a single tip on both sides. Now, in the center, the Michigan plate 1968, original plate styling over here. This car came from Michigan and we just couldn't take it off. How cool is that? That's where this car actually came from. But if you notice, you, you raise yourself just a little bit higher, you're gonna notice that duck bill, the spoiler, on the Shelby over here. 
and it is fiberglass and it is an excellent shape. I mean, just like the front, no waffling, no bending, no curving, really, really good shape for fiberglass. What's even cooler than that? The glass. It still has car-like glass and all the numbers match all the way around. That AM2 front, back, and side glass. How cool is that? All right, guys, let's take a look inside of this KR now. So as you see, as soon as I open up the door, all the lights function correctly. But what's really cool is the pop tilt steering wheel. So as you notice, it's off to the right a little bit. As soon as you shut off the car, you open the door, this bad boy pops in. So as soon as you come in the car, you just pop it right back into place. So it does give you an ease of getting out of the car no matter how tall or how big you are. But as far as the originality of the car goes, untouched and very well preserved. I mean, look at the cushion in the center console still works, has the working light actually still in there, which is really cool. Push it down, clicks into place. It has even the seatbelt holders, the original knob on here with that Shelby Cobra right there, that Cobra snake, really iconic. It's everywhere throughout the car, inside and out. Now it even has the Cobra jet on the center dash over there. AM, FM radio, and your working AC and heating controls. Like I said before, it is pretty cold out, so we were blasting the heat, but the AC does function correctly. Now looking ahead of us, you're gonna notice all those gauges I was talking about earlier in the driving review, but the clarity of the gauges, you can read everything really, really nice. Even in the center console over here, your pressure and your alternator over here, you look really clear. You can see all the numbers for an age of a car this old, you would think it would have some sort of haziness or blurriness looking through it. Looks absolutely great, especially the way it's been spec'd out from the factory. The headliner, it has the little sticker still on here. Seatbelt should be worn in conjunction with shoulder harness. Now, let's take a look at those shoulder harness. Man, those are a death trap. I'm not sure what they were thinking, but they come right back. As soon as it comes back, you hit something and it locks you right into place. I could just imagine the stripes that you will have on a hard braking with this kind of car. But it is connected to the roll cage in there, so God forbid any type of accident will occur. You have a roll cage in this factory car, which is a really cool, really cool feature. I mean, a car 53 years old, having that type of stuff, you don't have an airbag, so that's definitely gonna save your life. But working fold down seats, working vents in the rear, all the lighting, all the controls are working properly. Now with that matching fold down seat, you're gonna notice the front seats. Now I'm sitting in one right now and it is really plush, but it is the deluxe interior as you're gonna tell by the bottom of the door panels there. You have the speaker grill panels on the bottom that are super rare, very, very hard to find as well. But you have the knitted seats, deluxe, really nice condition no tears and no rips and really super comfortable and even the horn works which is really cool so overall a really nice well-preserved interior and there you guys have it the 1968 shelby gt 500 kr the king of the road baby the 428 Cobra jet motor, the well-preserved exterior, interior, and the underbody. A beautiful piece of history that any collector would love to have in their collection. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Mike, our Shelby expert, for all of the information and all of the insight on this piece of American history. And guys, I'm Chris Mazzarella, and you've been watching No Reserve Classics. And if you guys have any questions, Feel free to give me a call, Chris, at 1-800-562-7815. And if you guys haven't done it already, make sure you hit that subscribe button because you never know, your dream ride could be in the next video.